Deepwater Horizon oil spill may cause extinction of species. Fearing with the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico will deal a severe blow to the bluefin tuna. An environmental group is demanding that the U.S. government declare the fish an endangered species, setting off extensive new protections under federal law. Scientists agree that the Deepwater Horizon oil spill poses at least some risk to the bluefin, one of the most majestic and valuable fishes in the sea. Its numbers are already severely depleted from record levels. The bluefin is also the subject of a global controversy regarding overfishing. The bluefin is not the only fish that spawns in the Gulf, and while is often a focus of attention, scientists and researchers are worried about the impact of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill on many other species. In fact, scientists say, it is virtually certain that billions of fish eggs and larvae have died in the spill already, which came at the worst possible time of the year. Spawning season for many fish in the Gulf begins in April and runs into the summer. The drilling rig exploded on April 20th and the spill has since covered thousands and thousands of square miles with patches of oil. Both the BUSH and Obama administrations tried to win greater international protection for the bluefin, but their efforts were derailed by opposition from countries like Japan, where a single large bluefin can sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The tuna fish sold in cans comes from more abundant types of tuna, not from bluefin. The bluefin tuna uses the Gulf of Mexico as a prime spawning ground, and the Gulf is such a critical habitat for the animal that fishing for it was banned in the 1980s. But after spawning in the spring and summer, many tuna spend the rest of the year roaming the Atlantic, where they are hunted by a global fishing fleet. The Environmental Advocacy Group, the Center for Biological Diversity in Tucson, filed the request under the Endangered Species Act in late May. If the petition is granted, a process that could take years, the endangered listing would require that federal agencies conduct exhaustive analysis before taking any action, like granting drilling permits that would pose additional risk to the fish. And beyond tuna, other animals at apparent risk of harm include the whale shark, the largest fish in the ocean, and a group known as billfish, the foundation of a large recreational fishery in the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Atlantic. The billfish that could be affected include the fastest fish in the ocean, the sailfish, as well as blue marlin and swordfish. This is a much bigger problem than people are making out, said Barbara Block, a Stanford researcher who is among the world's leading experts on the bluefin tuna. The concern for wildlife is not just along the coast, it is also at sea. We're putting oil right into the blue water environment. Some of the science documenting the risk that oil drilling poses to spawning fish was paid for, for by none other than the Minerals Management Service, the federal agency responsible for leasing offshore tracks for oil development. Yet the results appear to have had little impact on the way the agency carried out its business. For instance, it never adopted seasonal limitations on drilling in the Gulf that might have reduced the risk of oil spills during spawning season. It also dismissed the dangers that drilling posed to deep water fish as negligible. In other words, it was about money. And President Obama has acknowledged the agency's failings. Its director resigned 
and a reorganization of the agency's functions is underway. Last week, it was renamed the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, Regulation and Enforcement. The agency responded to inquiries by saying that in light of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, its policies, including those for fisheries, were under review. Given that a single female fish can produce tens of millions of eggs, scientists say that many billions of them would have been in the water on April 20th. Of course, the vast majority of those would never survive to adulthood, even in normal times. But now, bathed in oil, even fewer will make it. It's obvious that any egg or larvae encountering oil will die, said the director of a research center on large fish and turtles. Less clear is whether fish would have continued to lay eggs near the spill after it began. Most fish can smell, and researchers hope that at least some species would have avoided spawning in oil. However, fish that can be readily spotted from the air, like whale sharks, have been seen in recent weeks in the vicinity of the spill. It could be about instinct. The question is, does everything shut down if there's oil there, or do they just go ahead and spawn anyway? Both many important fish in the region, like yellowfin tuna, are able to spawn across broad areas of the Gulf. And that means, hopefully, significant numbers of such fish could have hatched this year far from the oil spill. But many other species, including bluefin tuna, apparently have a strong instinct to spawn in a specific part of the ocean. Scientists fear that instinct might overcome the presence of oil in the water, causing the fish to spawn in areas where their offspring would be likely to die. One of the spawning areas in the Gulf, favored by bluefin, is in the vicinity of the spill. The risks the spill poses to fish of all kinds have provoked deep alarm among commercial and sport fishing groups. It's having a horrific impact on the marine and fishing industry. The big question is, how long is it going to last? Given that it takes some big fish years to reach spawning age, the death of larvae and juvenile fish could have consequences that might not show up for a long time. The oil spill could be the last straw with these very vulnerable species. And yes, that could be quite true. And again, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill is a continuing rolling disaster, continuing day by day, and is a physical manifestation of revelation. Again, revelation. 16, verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became like blood. And yes, everything is connected. Everything is numbered. These are the end times, transition days. Everything that must change, must change quickly or rapidly, and for the better. It's about human evolution and taking next step to a higher level and learning to be better stewards and to take care of the earth, not to harm it. And yes, these are more signs happening daily all around the world.